All right, so 2024 presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis, the fascist reactionary governor of Florida, has, at least from the perspective of the Republican base, been on an absolute tear recently with the legislation that he has managed to get passed through the state legislature. So I wanted to bring to you guys a couple different bills and examples of what he's been doing recently. But just to kick us off here, I think we got a perfect glimpse into just how hypocritical and uh, inconsistent Republicans are with the types of arguments that they've been making, pushing these types of legislation. So so here from The Guardian, they say DeSantis signs bill for Florida students to learn about victims of communism. So let's go ahead and get into some of the details here. They say discussions of gender identity and sexual preference are banned in many Florida classrooms because of Governor Ron DeSantis's don't say gay law, which I've covered on this channel before, alongside dozens of math textbooks that were blocked for prohibited topics. And we'll get to some of the details of this math textbook ban here in a minute. But they say now the Republican who has loudly condemned what he sees as indoctrination of young people has made yet another subject compulsory. Students are now going to have to receive at least 45 minutes of instruction every November about the victims of communism. And they say in a ceremony Monday at Miami's iconic Freedom Tower, where tens of thousands of Cuban immigrants fleeing Fidel Castro's revolution were admitted to the U.S. in the 1960s and 70s, DeSantis signed into law House Bill 395, designating the 7th of November as Victims of Communism Day, and Florida is one of a handful of states to adopt the designation, but is believed to be the first to mandate school instruction on that day. And the instruction will begin in the 2023-2024 school year, DeSantis said, and will require teaching about Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, and Fidel Castro, as well as the poverty, starvation, migration, systemic lethal violence, and suppression of speech endured under their leadership in the Soviet Union, China, and Cuba, respectively. So let's just go ahead and check Right back through this list that he just said. Listen, I'm a leftist. I'm a socialist. I, you know, I call myself a communist even. But you know, you, you can have valid criticisms of people like Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong and Fidel Castro in many different ways. And I think there's different degrees to which you would, you know, have that commentary depending on the specifics of uh, which situation that you're talking about here. It's perfectly fine to have criticisms of them. It's perfectly fine to have school lessons about them and the history of this and everything. But they're only talking about this from one perspective. They're talking about, you know, portraying people like Fidel Castro as the single most evil evil people in history, right? That's the framing that they're going with. And you can tell that they're not being genuine about their, you know, uh, their urge to teach people about the consequences of some of these leaders' actions, because all of the things that they are listing here in this list right here is stuff that you could apply to the modern capitalist system here in the United States right now, and definitely historically. So let's just go ahead and read back through it. They say poverty, starvation, okay? Poverty, famously something that the United States does not experience and has never experienced, okay? Something that capitalism definitely doesn't uh, maintain as a requirement to, you know, keep a cheap labor force available for capitalists to exploit. Famously, never had poverty here in the United States or in any capitalist country for that matter. Uh, starvation, again, famously something that capitalism has never been responsible for. Uh, migration, again, an example you could point to of, you know, throughout U.S. history, the U.S. empire and other uh, colonial and imperial powers enforcing their, their will on countries around the world. In the case of the United States, you could look to uh, South and Central America and see the direct consequence of capitalist imperialism with the CIA going in and supporting death squads and destabilizing governments and U.S. multinational corporations exploiting their resources, exploiting their labor, keeping people impoverished, and again, creating the destabilization that then leads to mass migration as we're seeing right now take place. But of course, they're only going to be portraying this from the anti-communist side and will have no valid critiques of the capitalist system and its responsibility for migration. Uh, systemic lethal violence, again, famously something you will never see here in the United States. I wonder if he would ever discuss, you know, the systemic violence that is baked within the uh, U.S. police system, the criminal justice system. No, not going to be talking about any of that because famously systemic lethal violence only ever occurred under Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, and Fidel Castro, as well as suppression of speech. Again, you know, I think uh, Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning would like to have a word on suppression of speech, specifically Julian Assange, who is right now being actively prosecuted uh, by the Joe Biden administration and uh, was so under the Trump administration as well for simply exposing the crimes of the U.S. empire. So clearly, United States has a great appreciation for uh, so, uh, for freedom of speech and would never in any circumstances suppress that free speech. So again, you just look at this and you see the glaring hypocrisy here. They're only going about this in a one-sided way, right? Literally creating a Victims of Communism Day where they, they can just go and shit on all of these different leaders and basically paint them to be the most evil people who ever existed on the face of the planet while simultaneously not having 
having those same discussions about the flaws of the capitalist system. And again, none of this is an actual critique of communism or socialism as an actual concept or as an economic theory. It's not that at all. It is literally just saying capitalism good, communism bad, and every single person who ever called themselves a socialist or a communist throughout history has been inherently evil. They're not going to have any actual discussions about the flaws within the Joseph Stalin or uh, Mao Zedong, uh, uh, Mao Zedong political apparatuses. They're never going to have any valid discussions about real critiques that you could have of those governments. They're only going to go about this in a simple communism bad, capitalism good framework. But again, all those different things we just listed there would be valid critiques and valid things to learn about that are happening right now as a direct consequence of the history of colonialism and imperialism largely perpetrated, at least in modern history, by the United States. But of course, he wants to simultaneously shit on communism just in an inherent way, while also preventing teachers from actually discussing the issues that lead to these same consequences that he's talking about here that have been perpetuated by capitalist empires like the United States. But they say here, just a little more context on that, that educators in Florida are banned now from teaching students about racial issues, including the history of slavery, if it makes them feel uncomfortable. So again, the same Republicans who pretend like, you know, Ben Shapiro, like, oh, facts over feelings, right? But then when it comes down to it, they are literally enshrining in legislation within their states that if something makes a white person or a white kid feel uncomfortable to have those discussions, that then you're not allowed to talk about it. So again, can't talk about the history of racism and slavery here in the United States in any legitimate way that analyzes the structures and the institutions that are still having effects uh, right now in the modern United States, can't discuss the history of that, can't discuss the modern effects that that has had on the current state of the United States. So, you know, simultaneously pushing this anti-communist propaganda while also preventing actual discussions about the flaws of the capitalist system or of the flaws of the United States throughout history. And of course, a little bit more context here, they say the governor who is seeking re-election in November has signed a number of other bills popular with the Republican base, including a 15-week abortion ban and a racist redrawing of Florida's congressional maps that critics say robs black voters of representation. So again, when I call him a fascist, I'm not being, you know, hyperbolic here. I'm just pointing out that basically all of the recent policies that he has been enacting, anti-LGBT2, uh, anti-LGBTQ uh, policies, the don't say gay bill, for example, the anti-CRT policies, which are, as you're going to see with a little bit more details here, are literally just intended to prevent discussions of the history of the United States or anything that apparently could make little white kids uncomfortable, I guess, in the classroom. So on all of these different fronts, this is fascism. This is exactly the tactics that fascists have used historically. But they continue with a little bit of details here from the AP on the specifics of the uh, CRT bill that he was passing. So uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law new guidelines on Friday involving race-based discussions in businesses and schools as part of his campaign against critical race theory, which he called a pernicious ideology. Okay, first of all, it's not an ideology. It is literally just an academic theory that gives you the ability to do a, a lens of analysis um, of, of the historical structures within the United States, the institutions within the United States, and how they relate to consequences or effects uh, on different racial lines. That's all that critical race theory actually is. It's just an honest depiction of American history and having those discussions. It's not an ideology. It's not propaganda, but that's exactly how he portrays it. And they continue saying, passed by lawmakers earlier this year, the legislation bars instructions, uh, instruction that says members of one race are inherently racist. Nobody was teaching that. And that they should feel guilt for past actions committed by others of the same race. So again, nobody is teaching that all white people right now should feel guilty people are maybe having valid discussions about how white people or you know Americans in general could participate in undoing a lot of the consequences that came from the structures and the uh, you know system of slavery and Jim Crow etc but they say or that a person's status as privileged or oppressed is necessarily determined by their race and they say it also bars the notion that meritocracy is racist as if the United States has a meritocracy. We don't have a meritocracy. So what he's really saying there is not teaching that meritocracy is racist, which in theory, of course, it's not necessarily racist, but in the modern incarnation of what capitalists like Ron DeSantis call meritocracy here in the United States could definitely be identified as racist. I mean, again, all you would have to look to is statistics regarding, you know, uh, hiring practices or uh, statistics regarding, uh, like, for example, the black-white racial wealth gap that 
that still exists right now. If you were to look at that and you were to say, oh, well, the United States is a perfect meritocracy. And so, you know, there's no racial institutional issues that have given in to the ra ra uh, black, white racial wealth gap in this country. Well, the conclusion from that, from the delusional mind of somebody like Ron DeSantis would be, well, the fact that there's a massive gap in the wealth between black people and white people in the United States, that's just the result of individual failures. It's a result of, you know, the culture of black people in the United States. It has nothing to do with history. It has nothing to do with institutions or systemic oppression that black people have faced. And in fact, if you want to discuss things like, for example, redlining here in the United States and how dramatic of an effect that that has still to this day on that black, white racial wealth gap, then you could be fired as a teacher for t talking about that type of thing, because that's scary, racist or uh, scary, radical Marxist uh, CRT propaganda. But again, that's what he means by meritocracy is racist or that discrimination is acceptable in achieving diversity. And he said, this is just absolutely fucking hilarious. He said, quote, we believe in education, not in indo indoctrination. So you believe in education, not indoctrination, but you're signing a bill mandating that students learn about the evils of communism, the victims of communism throughout history while not allowing them to analyze the actual history of capitalism within the United States and the actual history of uh, you know racism and slavery and uh, all the laws and institutions that followed that here in the United States. And they say, DeSantis said that Florida students will not have oppressive ideologies imposed on them. Seems like you're imposing the oppressive ideology of capitalism on them. But they say, as the bill provides substantive, pro substantive protections for students in grade K through 12, he said pernicious ideologies will not be allowed. So basically, he's just banning the teaching of socialism or communism in any way that doesn't portray it as the greatest evil that humanity has ever inflicted upon itself. But finally, another laughable quote here. He says, we will not use your tax dollars to teach kids to hate this country or to hate each other. So again, nobody is teaching people to hate each other. Nobody is talking about that. What people are talking about is analyzing the institutions, the systems within the United States that have had an effect on the modern economic situation and the modern cultural and societal uh, situation that minorities within this country are facing. That's all that it is. And yet he's turning around saying that that somehow means that you hate this country. No, that means that you have some affinity for this country because you want to make it better, right? You want to analyze those institutions so that you can improve upon them. But he doesn't want to improve upon them at all very clearly but just as one more example here to finish us off with the uh, math textbooks this was really just the most absurd one at face value but here from the guardian again they say florida's examples of banned topics in math books derided as political theater so education officials released four examples amongst the 54 math books that they rejected last week because of prohibited topics so again conservatives have been coming out and using these lines about you know oh they're, they're trying to inject this woke uh, cultural marxist propaganda into our education system we need to just be teaching kids you know, science and math and, and stuff like that. It's like, no, even in the math sector, you are banning textbooks because you think that they're filled with critical race theory propaganda. So let's go ahead and read in some of the details here. They said, Education officials in Florida have been criticized for putting political theater over teaching after they revealed four examples among the 54 math textbooks that they rejected last week. And the state said that it had refused to use the books because of prohibited topics, include, including alleged references to critical race theory. And on Friday, however, after pressure to explain the decisions, the education department published several images of math problems from the textbook with the offending segments highlighted. And in one example, a colored graph features levels of prejudice, uh, racial prejudice, prejudice by age. And another example under the heading adding and subjecting polynomials begins with the words what me racist and uses the statistical results of a common survey about unconscious bias as an example set for mathematics problems. This is what they think is cultural Marxist CRT propaganda. Okay. But they continue here saying the other examples make references to social and emotional learning or social awareness Concepts that conservative education activists say are a gateway to left-wing ideology, social awareness, and social and emotional learning. So unless you are being taught to just be a cog in the machine of capitalism within this country and not be aware of any of these other things, social and emotional learning, then you are a, a radical communist propagandist who needs to be banned from the Florida educational uh, institution. But they continue saying, quote, those, those examples were given with no context and were not even elementary level material said Andrew Sparr, president of the Florida Education Association that represents more than 150,000 educators. So it seems like it's more about smoke and mirrors of trying to accomplish a political agenda than really about what we are teaching our kids. Yes, that is obviously accurate. And listen, I mean, again, at the end of the day, all of this is just fascist ideology being put forward front and center within the Republican Party. This guy, Ron DeSantis, has presidential ambitions, assuming maybe Trump doesn't run or even if Donald Trump does
does decide to run, this guy wants to be president. And so he's leaning into all of these different culture war issues that are uh, being put forward by conservatives right now in a completely disingenuous way because they have nothing to talk about on economic grounds, nothing to talk about on reducing the influence of the military industrial complex, etc. Nothing that will materially improve the lives of average Americans, of working class Americans. So he chooses to focus in on these bullshit culture war issues that are specifically targeting LGBTQ uh, communities, uh, uh, minority communities within the United States, and uh, just pushing a, a fascist, nationalist, patriotic uh, ideology while simultaneously pushing anti-communist propaganda on children who are growing up in this uh, state of Florida and going through this education system. So it's very clear exactly what he's doing. I don't even know necessarily if he believes uh, anything that he is saying or pushing in these types of bills, but this is what he's doing. This is the uh, current state of the Republican Party. Uh, they are just openly outright fascists.